It's hard to avoid seeing that the world is going through a very difficult time. We want to do something to help, but what? Policies, negotiations, and wars have all fallen short, and it's hard to know where to turn. There is ancient wisdom that offers another way forward. This wisdom has been handed down over thousands of years and kept alive by great teachers. One of those teachers, Sakyong Mipam Rinpoche, holder of the Shambhala lineage, has written a new book explaining these principles and how to apply them. The Sakyong learned from his father, the Tibetan meditation master Chugyam Trungpa Rinpoche, who had as much reason as anyone to doubt human nature. So when he left Tibet and uh, the Himalayan uh, land where he experienced uh, deep spiritual training and, and had to come into India, he was forced to witness uh, this tremendous savagery. And out of that experience and out of his own personal uh, self-reflection, he actually came to the conclusion and felt that it was important to express that humanity deep down is good, that it is complete, and that this notion of respecting each person and cultivating that in each of us is actually the best way to prevent and help uh, more people from becoming uh, savage and aggressive, and that it is due to some deep sense of hurt, insecurity, non-respect that somebody has experienced where they engage in hurting others. And by just vilifying certain people, uh, we are at, as a whole not necessarily helping this human species, but rather by looking at some innate qualities that all of us possess and being fully aware of the fact that on a daily level, all of us can any moment behave badly and hurt others. But that is not a reason to give up on the overall confidence of humanity itself. In his new book, The Shambhala Principle, the Sakyong inspires us to honestly consider the idea that we are all deeply and fundamentally good. This goodness is always present, even in the face of hardships like illness, a collapsing economy, or climate change. So how we can build a strength and how we can build fortitude and resilience and inspiration, constantly coming back to our own sense of worthiness, our own sense of how we regard and what we regard as important, and how we can begin to communicate that. And through our own confidence and through our own conviction, we begin to actually uh, communicate that to others. And I feel like that is a way that uh, shifts occur. And in this way, you know, we, we every day have the, our affecting culture. He encourages us to open up to our own longing for peace and the very real experience of goodness in our lives. Rather than focusing on our failures or the negativity of others, it is time to open our hearts to this simple and real goodness. Such an opening has the power to shift our direction. The one thing that we can do is really very much look at uh, our own mind and heart and realize, oh, that is complete. Our mind is vast, our heart is very, very full and strong. And deep down, all of us uh, have this ability that we are vibrant, complete, good. And, you know, these themes are sort of permanent and they don't change depending on good days and bad days. Even though the ideas in the Shambhala principle are simple, they are certainly not easy. The Sakyong points out, though, that we can be confident in our ability to help ourselves and the world to be peaceful and sane. This message of hope comes at a very important time in human history. Through simple shifts in the way we live and the way we view ourselves and others, we can change the course of history. Good luck and uh, please uh, be well and stay strong.